we're back me and my truck so i know it's been a long time since i posted something but we actually got a crazy heat wave here where we had triple digits and i've been crazy busy however i have been recording so uh there's probably going to be quite a few videos starting to release after this video so uh, thanks for waiting and sorry for the delay but uh, we should start getting some videos out because now it's back in the 80s and 90s instead of 100s so thanks for waiting and we're back in the attic so we have this condenser here up in the attic of course it's the first company uh, i guess it's designed to be in an attic as you can see it has an intake and exhaust ducted outside so that's kind of cool well apparently it's been going off on thermal overload uh, we had another tech here so we're uh, it was just too hot to reset it so we're gonna see what's going on with it so um, and then the furnace is right over here so we don't have to go back and forth so here we go okay so we're gonna go ahead and check this so we're gonna pop this cap off here or we're gonna attempt to anyways yeah, you just pull this up and pop it over these little tabs. And it comes down like that. And then it just, just slides right out like that. All right. So we're going to ohm out this compressor just to make sure it's good before we do anything else. Uh, and then we'll check the run cap. And then we'll check the contactor. And then we'll go from there. Okay, so we're going to check start to run. And we have 3.1. Okay, so now we're gonna check start to common. And we have 2.2, and then we're gonna do common to uh, common to run. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're gonna do uh, start to ground, run to ground, and common to ground. So we're gonna put this here on our ground. Make sure we don't have anything. No, that's common. Now we're gonna do start, good. And we're gonna do run, good. So it's not grounded. And thermal overload has been reset. So we're gonna go ahead and hook this all back up. And then uh, we're gonna get our gauges connected and then we'll cycle it on, see what's up. Okay, so we got it all put back together. We're gonna go ahead and check our capacitor. Uh, so this is a 35.5. So this is the compressor side. And it's pretty much in spec. All right. And our fan side is supposed to be five, which it's close. All right, so that's fine. Contactor, contacts seem to be good. Yeah, there's their nice and clean. So we'll check our voltage and then before we put the panel back on. But now we're gonna put this all back together. We're gonna hook up some gauges, put the door back on, and then we'll cycle it on and see what's going on with it. Um, and then that hole right there, I'm gonna go ahead and seal that up. Um, actually probably gonna seal it up after. See if it makes a change. All right, so we got the panel back on. We got our furnace, we're gonna jump it out. This is our refrigerant pressures, it's R22, so it's looking somewhat normal. So we're gonna go ahead and jump uh, R to Y and uh, get this thing going, then we'll put the lower door on. All righty, so we got her on. Pressures don't look terrible. Find out if that's an intake. Let's see. Our pressures are not well. Our low side's dropping. We're gonna let it run for a little bit. Let's see if this is an intake. No, that's the exhaust. Okay, that's just an exhaust. It's not too worried. I'll probably seal it anyway. Okay, so we've been running it for a while and this is what's going on. So we have low suction, our, our head pressure is high. We have uh, a high suction temperature and we have a, um, 
low subcooling and high superheat. So what this is telling me is the system's low. Now the reason why this is high head pressure is probably because of the design of this thing. Um, but I'm gonna go with uh, my low subcooling and we're gonna go with the fact that our superheat is ridiculously high and there is no TXV on this unit. So um, if you look at the suction temperature, come on, connect. Okay, well anyway, our suction temperature is 80 degrees. So the compressor uses that cold refrigerant coming back as a coolant. Um, so when it gets really hot up here, it's not terrible up here, it's starting to get warm, but uh, when it gets really hot up here, that temperature, it's not cool enough to cool the compressor, so the ambient air temperature in here just overheats it and it goes off on thermal overload. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna charge maybe a pound. I think I don't think it's gonna take more than a pound. It looks like it's just slightly. So we're gonna probably put in eight ounces at a time and then try that. I'm gonna hook up my regular gauges. These right here, because uh, when I'm charging, I'm gonna have to leave this on. And actually, it actually says it here. Um, but uh, you just pull these plugs and you can route your, your hoses and your cables through there. So we're gonna switch that up. So I'm gonna pull the disconnect and then uh, get that all set up. Okay, so the compressor, um, when I went to turn it back on, it wouldn't come on. So I'm gonna install a hard start kit. Uh, so they were all out of uh, 521, so I'm gonna have to use this one. I don't like these, but hopefully I'll just get the job done. So this is a Subco Super Boost SPP6. Uh, hard start kit. So what I'm going to do here, since there's no room to stick it in the electrical panel, is I'm going to mount it on top of here. So I'm just going to drill a hole for the wires to go through and then connect it there. So one goes on hermetic and one goes on common. Okay, so we got our super boost installed. Just reuse that screw that was right there. We drilled a small hole for the wires to go in so it'll reach to the capacitor. So we have one on herm and one on common. That should give us enough boost to get it started, and then we're gonna go ahead and check the charge and get it charged up to where it needs to be. Okay, so we got everything hooked up, so I got the power on. We're using this drain switch as a switch, so. All right, compressor came on this time. So we're gonna wait till it uh, uh, stabilizes, and then we'll go ahead and charge it. Okay, so here's where we're at. We have a suction of 57-ish, a high side of 226, which is actually high, because our current uh, ambient temperature is 75, so 75, 85, 95, so it's slightly high, but look at our suction temperature, and then look at our superheat, super high, so we are low, and then our subcooling is completely just negative, so when it's negative on this unit, it doesn't it just goes blank. So we're gonna add a little bit of charge. We'll start by adding eight ounces. So we got our scale in our tank. So we're gonna go ahead and crack this and we're gonna let in eight ounces. And then we'll let it sit and see what it does. That's very important that you just crack it and then this will actually get cold. So you wanna meter it in. We're at five ounces, six ounces, seven, and eight ounces. So now we're just gonna let it stabilize and hopefully our suction temperature comes down and we get a better superheat too. So when you wanna reduce your superheat, you add refrigerant. To increase it, you uh, remove refrigerant. So it is starting to come down a little bit. Our temperature here is starting to come down a bit, so we're gonna let it sit for a minute and see what it does. Okay, so uh, we're all done here. I've added a little bit of refrigerant and it's running a little better. It's cooling. We got about a 20 degree delta. It's not perfect. Um, I just realized that the piston that's inside that unit, they never replaced it. It's whatever was already in there. So that's why we're getting a high head and our subcooling is just crazy. Uh, so we're gonna talk to the client about getting that, but we got them up and running for now. Uh, so we're gonna call it for now and then hopefully we can come back and change out that piston. Anyway, 
Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment. Tell me what a horrible technician I am. Uh, hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.